Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Back for another Fantasy Grounds Fridays, man. I, I, what's up, Doug? Welcome, everybody. What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, not much, man. Just been kind of recovering the last couple of days from that 3,800-mile yeah. trip. Holy cow, man. That was... Yeah. That, that was Seriously, that was grueling, man. I mean, just driving, getting there... It took me 20, 29 hours. I stopped in Louisiana about for about four or five hours and slept in some like Roach Motel in the swamp and uh, nice. did a, did a little bit of cow tipping and stuff. But uh, then I just I drove straight through uh, and and didn't even get it. I, I think I got about another four or five hours of rest before getting the u-haul truck and getting all of my mother's stuff onto the u-haul and then, I, I forgot to tell you dave that you forgot mm-hmm. something uh you're gonna, have to make, you're gonna have to come back make the trip to come back and <laughs> <bless something. laughs> you're in florida I, actually uh she actually left some of her clothes and stuff so oh yeah uh, yeah so yeah, at a certain uh, point if i move again i've always been like i just want to sell everything and then just rebuy stuff where i move because that's move long distance if you if anyone on the stream if you guys have ever moved long distance guys or girls uh it is not not a pleasant not a pleasant process so that's what dave gets for moving away man i moved down to florida and then dave was like that's it i'm out of here oh uh, pulled up stakes and left (laughs) i'll tell i'll tell you what that i've been away i've been in texas now for eight months and the first thing I noticed as soon as I got into around Houston was the humidity. I mean, when I stopped and got gas and got out of the car, by the time I got back into the car, I was just like sweating already. And yeah. I mean, I don't mind. So, I mean, I've sweated my whole life. I've lived in, you know, Central Florida. But man, when you're in El Paso, you do not have, I mean, on a 110 degree, 115 degree day, there may be three to 6% humidity. And that's just, that's amazing. And I mean, you can eat literally, you can go and buy a drink at a, at a convenience store and it will not sweat through the cup. It's just amazing. <laughs> wow. I don't, but man, as soon as I got to Florida, it was like, I just drove right into a wall of rain Oh yeah, and all of that humidity, but uh, man, it, and then getting there, getting in, everything loaded up and then leaving immediately the next day i mean it was just non-stop and uh you know i had my mother so i didn't want to i didn't want to push the trip because you know i mean yeah. she you know, she's in her 70s and i, I just didn't want to do that so we Good stopped stuff. like four times but man it was my feet were killing me because of the u-haul that i had the pedals were up a little bit higher so my feet were at a weird angle oh man was, FX guy said he moved from Florida to Maine. That's that's not pleasant. That's not good. No, that was and then, that's uh, too. 5150 says uh, that he moved from the east coast of Canada to the west coast of the USA. You were really smart. It looks like you said you sold everything just about and then just uh, brought yep. what you could bring with you on an airplane. That is that's the way to do it. Um, wow, he went I, more hardcore than I did. I know. I well, you get I had left you get in attached my to your stuff, but man, I tell you what, that stuff's like baggage. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I moved That's... way too much stuff with me when I moved from uh, Kentucky to Florida, and it was it was painful. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I all right. Was... So what do, what do we got so... on the the? So what what's uh, the latest greatest? Uh, well, first, welcome back, welcome back thanks. to thanks, man. to the to team. I can quit doing customer support. So uh, <laughs> for anyone who had to write into customer support during Dave's absence, I apologize. You got you got the Doug the Doug show instead of the Dave show. I think I did a decent job. Dude, I did it pretty I was... good. I was looking. I, I don't see any that were missed. I, I went through about 15, 20. And I'm like, wow, Doug nailed this. I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's you, what you get to do, uh, yeah. folks. If, you, if you're ever a uh, uh, owner of a company or a CEO or a president of a small company, anything like that, uh, your actual job duties are like president, salesman, sometimes developer code, uh, janitor, uh, customer service, accountant. I mean, basically anything that needs to be done is, is what, what you have to do. So uh, I'm always happy to do it. I, I mean, I kind of like doing it somewhat. You know, it's fun to, you get to interact directly with people. Um, that's what I like about, that's what I like about it is just talking with everybody and and the back and forth emails and then 
sometimes other conversations will start up and stuff and they'll be like hey you're that digital dungeon master guy or something like that and i'm like uh yeah yeah but yeah that's pretty uh, yeah. but I, I love doing it though i mean i, I like the whole yeah. i like the interaction with with everyone that's what i like yep 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 all right so uh so yeah we're sorry we're just getting back into the flow of everything again we'll get back into some interviews here kind of coming up um <clears throat> But Dave, you want to take us through? We have some interesting new releases. You want to maybe take us through yeah. some new releases? Yeah, absolutely. The, the big one, you know, the eight hundred pound elephant in a room that mm -hmm. that just released. Uh, I believe it was last night. Was is the new D and D five E Waterdeep uh, Dragon Heist, and it's uh, twenty four ninety nine. Uh, compared to the fifty dollar hardback price, I mean, so you get everything all digital, twenty four ninety nine. It's by Wizards of the Coast. It is the the new campaign setting that will uh, lead into uh, the Mad Wizards or Halasters uh, Undermountain, which will be coming up in November. So uh, you can pick this up. Uh, it was just released. Uh, it has all kinds of great screenshots. At midnight, twelve oh one a.m. Yeah. Eastern. <laughs> Doug, yeah. Were, were you waiting there just with your hand on the refresh button, just yeah. clicking, going, ah. So, I have multiple uh, clocks going so that I'm like, okay, I, when <laughs> this gets to 11.59 on all my clocks, I'm like, I'm going to go synchronize your clocks and push. Yeah. Well, Steam doesn't have, you would think that it'd be completely automated, but we don't have, Steam doesn't have an option to say, just release it on this time. So you have to go through a little process that has to like, yeah. spin little circles and hopefully your browser doesn't crap out on you or whatever but it's yeah. all good and you know and the great thing about it is as rob mentioned in chat is I, I plus i put the link in there so you can go right to the the fantasy grounds web store and pick that up and, and you can also pick this up on steam as well but if you have yeah. the bundle if you have the completed bundle this is an actual eighteen dollar seventy four cent purchase which is 25 percent off which is even that much lower so yep get yep. those bundles complete you know even if you can only do like one one thing at a time or two it things at a time. very quickly pays yeah. for itself that's for sure it that's does it. for sure and you know especially when there's sales and stuff you can those will also count the discount will also count if anything's on sale and and yeah it's it's a it's a win-win situation so but yeah water uh water deep uh water heist i believe this is a this adventure goes to level five and then in november when under mountain comes out it'll go from uh, five to 20 which will be the yeah. first level 20 campaign that they've actually had come out so yeah so check it out Go ahead. I'm going to jump in and yeah. kind of break up the flow a little bit because um, you know we were talking a little bit right before the stream started. Yeah. The um, if you haven't downloaded yet, you haven't looked at the book or the um, or the module in Fancy Grounds yet. We always do like a straight up conversion. Whatever's in the book, that's what we include for maps and stuff. So if you've already had a chance to look at it, to peek at it, the maps are a little bit different. There's a whole bunch of maps in it. The maps are um, they're they're a black and white stylistic version of a map as opposed to um you know some of the more colorful uh, mike schley uh schley i think maps and uh you know that sort of style so um we have that in there and i'm going to show a little bit of screenshot so if you don't want spoilers maybe just look away just don't focus on details of, of what the actual map is because i don't want to like put any spoilers i'm just going to show off like one or two of the maps basically um and then zacchaeus uh philip uh, Greg, who actually did the conversion for us for Waterdeep, he's been working over the last probably three to four weeks, actually through Campaign Cartographer, making full color versions of each of those maps. So um, let me do, let me see if I can switch over to a screen share. I'll just show you a few of those. Uh, so we had it on the forums. And in fact, uh, I reached out to Zacchaeus and I'm like, these are fantastic. The forums are going to get lost. People aren't going to know to go get them from the forum. So uh, I asked if he was okay with us just including it side by side. So if you buy the, the Waterdeep Dragon Heist, you would just get an update. If you've already downloaded it and get an update, just re-update again. You'll get an updated version. You'll also get a secondary module called Zacchaeus's, uh, let's see if I can get the name right, uh, Zacchaeus's Dragon Heist Map Pack. And in there, it's got uh, alternate images for every one of the maps. So it'll automatically come through and uh, you can open that up and look at it side by side. So you can decide which one you like and you can use either one. So all of the map pins are gonna be linked to, to the built-in ones. Uh, and then you can just kind of swap as needed. So I'm going to, uh, like I said, do a screen share. I'll show you just a little bit of what that looks like. 
but it should should hopefully you know help you know provide a couple different options. So let's see. Da, 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 turn on screen share. Boom. Cool. All right. I'm ready when uh, when you are there, Dave. Oh, we're ready. We're rocking and rolling, man. All right, cool. So uh, you guys can see that okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your library. Um, and here's my little Eberron background. See that? Uh, you go to your library modules. And then if we look for Dragon Heist, you're going to see here you'll have the main Dragon Heist module. And then you'll have uh, a Zacchaeus's Dragon Heist map pack as well. And so um, you open both of those up. And then in your library, you'll have... You know, the reference manual will have, you know, just like before, you've got, uh, let me not, let me not actually <clears throat> skip too much of this for you. So this will have, you know, everything like before. Um, it'll have its maps built in, uh, which would be like, let's say here's an example of an alley, for instance. And so as you can see, let me control shift this over here. So this is an alleyway. That you can use it looks pretty cool uh i mean i dig it i could i would definitely like this would be fantastic to run if you were doing like on a like rollout map and you're able to draw to this level uh very quickly yeah. um and it's got the grid on it and so you can use that but you can see the grid lines are hand-drawn grid lines and it has a different feel uh than some of the other maps that that are available for fantasy grounds so the same map if you go into the uh, zacchaeus version here's the alley and so it's just the player versions of those maps. Um, but now you can move around here. Um, and so you've got <clears throat> two different versions that you can use. So there's the alley. Um, here's a courthouse. Uh, so this is this is Zacchaeus's version of the courthouse with uh, little cool furniture and some shelves, bookshelves. I mean, he really, really did a fantastic job with it. Uh, and then the exterior, obviously. And then if I do that same one, the courthouse, um, looks like this. So that's kind of um, that's that's something we don't normally do. Zacchaeus just completely took that on his own uh, and decided to provide this extra functionality. And so I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, Zacchaeus is the guy that did the conversion, so uh, definitely picking up every one of those copies uh, will will help. You know, put money in his pocket as well as ours, obviously. Um, but but that's something that you should be should be good to go, and it's already got the grid pre-lined. Uh, it's already optimized. Images look fanta fantastic. Um, yeah, so there's there's the villa, the villa, the villa, chilling in the villa, and then we got a couple of different villas here. First, yeah, I mean, good stuff, good stuff. These maps would be great even if you don't even run the module. I mean, you could reuse yeah. a lot of these maps. Yeah, he did a great job on uh, all of the Out of the Abyss maps also from a couple years back. Yeah. Yeah, you got a little horse barn. I mean, you could you could reuse these maps in an unlimited number of different different things. So yeah. definitely, I mean, that's worth the price of admission right there, basically. Uh, but the adventure looks pretty cool, um, too. So I'm, I'm pretty interested in running the adventure just because it's got some... Uh, some very interesting. I don't want to spoil any of the actual details of, of the actual uh, adventure itself, but um, yeah, it, it looks looks very very interesting. I'm I'm intrigued by it. What's your favorite underdark monster? Mine or race? I I, I like uh, I like mind flares, man. <clears throat> I like mind yeah. flares, and uh, I like the, I like the drow. I like driders. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when I was a kid growing up, it was all about reading, you know, Drizzt Duerden, you know, the trilogy, and you know, yeah. talk, I always had Drow had talked about a lot of the Underdark. So you know, I kind of like I kind of like uh, the Illithids and Mind Flayers and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Mind Flayers too. Hook horror, yeah. hook horrors are actually something that I can, like. Um, they're yeah. like not not my main one, but like just as as a staple bad guy that you can throw in there that are almost like a mindless just instinct driven feeder yeah you know th those are those are not i just like the imagery of the the dudes running around with these single claws that just rend you rend you to pieces and then you know a beak that comes down plus i used to have like those D, &D toys yeah uh, i've still got one of those i passed it down to my son so he has a he has his own hook horror that he's had since he was little so 
the icons yeah. of the realms they actually put out during you know because every every time a module comes out they put out another miniature line and when the when they did the out of the abyss stuff they they did a, a rare hook horror and it actually looks mm-hmm. really good and it's a large figure and uh, i would get break it out but all that stuff is like in boxes right now so celestian so, says uh carrion crawlers are the best monster ever man carrion crawlers are nasty nasty i mean those are, are if you want a tpk it just depends on whether or not they paralyze everybody or not because it could be a it could be a quick short campaign <laughs> i actually did a 13th age game one time doug with yeah. carrion crawlers and rust monsters at the same time nice the, the party did not like it they that's an awesome like combo it, that they must yeah. hate you yeah or you yes. must have hated them so they they were pretty much all paralyzed and all of their weapons and armor were just totally destroyed. So I call that economy yeah. control. <laughs> so whatever, whatever they get what, a, a little bit too much money, just the DM gives out monsters. too much loot. It's time to break out the rust monsters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Especially, your bag of devouring. I noticed how you use that in one of your campaigns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Your arm just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice especially when you have your players that just buy chain mail they just buy their plate mail and that stuff is not cheap in 5th no. in edition for new characters and just throw a rust monster at it I mean why not <laughs> I remember that was one of the very first monsters you encountered in box you come through and there was a rust monster there Yeah. right after you got done doing all the shopping you go into the little dungeon next to the town and the very first monster you come up as a, as a rust monster I'm like Gygax, you were a bastard. Yeah, and just think, you know, the way that the the mechanics are with the new Pathfinder playtest, you can actually, you know, you have to fix your weapons and stuff like that by your dents and everything. And so, yeah, rust monsters would be good in Pathfinder too. <laughs> just just kind of throwing that out there, you know, it it actually makes the the crafting more the crafting skill viable and worth you know worth taking and 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 investing yeah. in so yeah really cool yeah you could do a lot of really cool stuff with um with kind of foreshadowing of rust monsters being in a, in a dungeon like you could have a bunch of like doors that are just falling off it's like with no hinges you know <laughs> yeah. stuff like that and uh just like oh you see some kind of rust around the corner you know because for brand new players that haven't come across rust monsters i mean you could really really kind of build it up there's a bunch of chests that are collapsed you know because all the bands mm-hmm. that were holding the, the wood together are all gone where'd they all go Heck there's yeah. just powder powder in the uh in the chest you know good stuff or you could just have like piles of bronze and stuff and, and kind of maybe oh wow this is gold but no, it's really not. It's the, the residue from the rust <laughs> monsters destroying everything. So, so we had a. I think we had a an update with the Pathfinder playtest this week, didn't we? Didn't we that added, yeah. or it, it was last on week Tuesday. That added, yeah. yeah. So on Tuesdays we have updates uh, for that. So yeah, if you uh, if you get an update on Tuesday, check it out. PFRPG two gets updated every every Tuesday, basically. And um, and I forget what the updates were on this last one, but they had a, he had a lot of stuff on there. Um, yes, yeah, I think spells and uh, the, was the spells spell last sheet. week. I, I, I think I lose track of time. Week. Yeah. Well, I was traveling, so I was trying to I was trying to read and drive at the same time and be pulled over at border patrol stops and it, you know it was. Uh, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I seen a couple of uh, updates. So, but yeah, spells are in there now. So yeah, and I think all of the all of the classes up to level five, if I'm not mistaken, but mm-hmm. some of them are fully mm-hmm. done. Yeah. For the later classes. Yep, yep. So work in progress and uh trenlo is doing a great job getting those updates out every every single week so yeah check out the plat the, the pathfinder play test is there uh i know a lot of people have been asking about the the eta on doomsday dawn is there any kind of eta or is it still it'll be out when uh it's out? he had to get he had to get a few more uh, <clears throat> of the basic functionality in place and i think he's getting ready to start cranking on that now to get the first couple sections of it out. I don't, it's not going to be 100% out, but he wants to release like part one, part two of it. Um, Makes he, sense. Kind of play with. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I remember he was saying when, when we had him on a couple weeks back that there was some of the basic functionality like the spells and the NPC yeah, you get the creature spells sheets and, and, and yep. stuff. Yeah. So, but I, I think the NPC creature sheets were out of this week if I'm not mistaken. The NPC sheets. So, so, like I said, it's it's all a blur for me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying 
It's all a blur. It's so a do blur. we have do we have anything else? Uh, anything else? Any kind of a uh, updates or announcements or? Mm, not much. Not much. That's. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, we should have something, I think. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. It's all. Who's on? Who's on our? Uh, who's scheduled next? Who's our next interview? I believe we have Keith Baker on. Everon next week. Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I've also got. Uh, I'm also working on a couple of other folks as well. And since I was on vacation last week, uh, I actually got a re- couple of replies back. So hopefully, we'll have some more dates to announce with a, a couple more uh, special guests that we're going to have. So we'll have. Yeah, but we'll have Keith Baker on next week. Uh, we're also going to have uh, Shane Hensley on again with Pinnacle yeah. Entertainment because of the, the new Savage Worlds Black uh, Kickstarter that was announced over the weekend uh, with the, the new chase rule changes for Savage Worlds and some other changes as well, the combination of skills. So Shane will be on here in the near future talking about the Kickstarter and all of the, uh, the changes for Savage Worlds. Uh, I'm also uh, working on a couple of others. Uh, the uh, Wild Die podcast, uh, they do... Uh, Savage World stuff, so uh, we'll be having them on. That'll probably have to be a a pre-recorded because of they're in pretty much every time zone in the world. Uh, so we'll have to pre-record that, and a couple of other uh, developers that we have that that do stuff with Fantasy Grounds as well will be on in the future. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Stadler C <clears throat> says uh, was Aeon thrown this week. I, th- I believe that was out last week, but it is out. It's available. Um, Yep, it was uh, officially out. released last week, so that is definitely available as well, and that is part one, and uh, it is really good. I have I have the the subscriptions for Starfinder, and I really liked what I read with uh, the Aeon Throne, so I think it's going to be a good series. And it seems like they're going with three books now instead of six for Starfinder, and it looks mm-hmm. like they're going to have each one of the the ap's continuing level so uh aeon throne will probably go to level six or seven and then the next ap after that those three books will probably go to like seven to 14 or 13 or something like that so Mm -hmm. uh that would be that would be pretty nice to see as well because sometimes i think six six books just get uh you know that's that's long-winded you know what i mean yeah Uh, but i think three books is great uh but we'll see you yeah, know, I, th- I know that it's something that they're experimenting with. So uh, whatever they decide to do, I'm still going to have it anyway because I like Starfinder. So yeah. yeah. So uh, Mac Warhammer asked, and I think someone else asked it earlier, uh, any Unity version update? And so uh, John is back in full swing of it. His uh, kids are now in school, so he has uh, more time to uh, to devote towards uh, doing that. Uh, my kids are in school, my and their kids. Uh, schedules have been crazy so I, I feel like I'm getting less time now all of a sudden with <laughs> taking one kid to robotics club and volunteering to, to help teach coding at the, the middle school and some other stuff like that uh, that's taking my time but John is now more available which is one of the big things that we really needed to get to kind of uh, start cleaning up some other areas where we've got um, we had a couple things that couldn't really show anything within Fancy Grounds Unity because some of the core functionality with the formatted text control and with the chat windows were were borked up. Um, they were really, really good. And then uh, some rewrites and some code changes rebroke things. And that's something you'll see all the time when you're doing development. So you build stuff, you break it, you rebuild, you, you patch it back up. But all of those things are kind of necessary um, to happen. And so it was in a broken state. And John did admit, he's like, I kind of left it like that on purpose so that you wouldn't be able to do um, any more previews <laughs> of it for a while. But he's getting to the point now where he's going to kind of clean that up and uh, and we'll hopefully be getting to a state where we'll be able to do maybe some more previews uh, here in the future. I had thrown out an end of August date. Um, John was like, no, that, that didn't work since he was not available to do a lot of the work, um, you know, in, in August. But I'm... Um, excited to see how fast he can kind of plug through some of the things that were on our kill list. The kill list is getting shrunk down uh, pretty quickly, uh, but we're still not to the point to where we're internally playing it yet. 
so we need to get to the point to where uh, we can internally play the the full game and feel like you know there could be some bugs as long as they're not like mission critical bugs to say okay we'll we'll just make a note of things that we need to fix. Uh, it's not to that stage yet, and it really needs to get really pretty close to that stage before we we do the Kickstarter. So. Um, beta is going to be quite a while uh, after that, but the the alpha stage. Once we feel like we have a good alpha, then we're going to look at, at throwing up a, a Kickstarter for it to uh, kind of announce it and and let people you know back in. And <clears throat> at that point, we'll have basically a 30 day window for funding for the Kickstarter. And then I don't know if it's going to be right at the 30 day mark uh, or sometime after that, that we'll say, okay, well, if you back at different levels, some people may be able to gain access to it at a certain point. We just want to be careful because we don't want to give access to it pre prematurely. And then, you know, you open it up. If you have a really bad experience, that's just going to sour your, your mood on. So we need to make sure that all the stuff that, that, you know, the, the core functionality is all kind of working and that you're able to use some of the cool new features smoothly without, you know, uh, pulling your hair out. So, uh, it's coming along. I'm, I'm uh, excited now to see how it's going to shape up over the next couple of weeks at least. But my August prediction, that's why we don't throw predictions out. My August prediction was way off. <laughs> so so uh, we're still desperately trying to get something in this year. I feel like we really, really need to get it in this year. So um, we'll see. We'll see how well we can do it. But a lot of that's going to be dependent upon, you know, how, how much progress kind of Carl and John can do kind of, you know, working working together on that. Plus Ryan working on the updater. That's going to be critical. I don't think we need the updater to be 100% done uh, for an alpha build launch. So uh, that's not a critical pass sort of thing. But uh, but definitely having him in and working on that will help us get it a smoother uh, install for the for the alpha build users. Uh, now I've so, got a little bit of a tangent. I don't know. I want to show off some. Uh, Dave's been doing all this miniature painting stuff. And so I cursed his name because uh, yeah, he did. got he got me back into it, and I lost <laughs> I lost some hours of sleep as a result this last week. Uh, so I was going to show off a few kind of cool things. Uh, I'll do a screen share again, demo, uh, show some some of these uh, figures I was working on. Let's see. Oh. <clears throat> and so I'm also going to give a shout out to this this uh, company called Army Painter. Army Painter has a, a cool product called Quick Shade, and I've got a before and after here uh, that I'm showing right now, which has basically the um, the one on the bottom is it's just a really really rough paint job. The one on the top is one that's just been dipped. Um, so that ended up looking. Where's the uh, next 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 option here? It's weird. Okay, so that's that one. Here's the even even better. Uh, before and after. So here is yeah, so amazing, man. An orc that is just slap. I mean, seriously, just this is a, a rank and file troop. Just slap some paint on to get it on the table with something. I think my mother actually even painted this because she was like, "Oh, I'm here. You've got a bunch of unpainted stuff. I'll, I'll do some." My mother, maybe my son, or some. I don't know, but I don't think I painted that one because it's really, really sloppy. Uh, but the one on the top has just been dipped, and so. Uh, it's, they have this thing called Quick Shade. That's using either Quick Shade Strong or Quick Shade Dark, um, but but nothing else really. And then here's the back of it. And uh, it what really a difference, man. I mean, oh my like, gosh, it doesn't even look like the same <clears throat> mini. I mean, it really does. No, look. no, and that's not the exact same mini, but it's the same style mini. And the paint was, I'm telling you, the paint was pretty much identical. So uh, I ended up doing those, and then I ended up uh, there's a whole block of them now. And then I dipped them. Um, I also found out that when you when you dip these things, you have to like um, use a basically use like a, a locking vice grip and kind of clip onto part of the part of the base, and hopefully you got it locked in tight. And then you just kind of dip them, you shake off the excess, and then you flick the excess off. And, and doing that repetitive flick motion for about a hundred miniatures evidently uses one part of your arm muscle that you don't use for anything else. <laughs> so I was like really sore <laughs> after doing those. Uh, so yeah, so there's, I, I've got some Blood Bowl figures here. So that's the, the back of some Blood Bowl figures. And uh, here's the front of those little humans, little humies. Uh, those turned out pretty decent. Uh, let's see, I got some, they're a little shiny. I'm going to do, there's an anti-shine stage I'm going to do anti-shine stage and then here's some um some deadlands or some great rail wars miniatures these are great little flamethrower guys um and i think i've got 
let's see the backs. Oh, there they are. The backs of them turned out pretty good. That's with one of their light Flame shades. Throws, yeah. With flamethrowers, yeah, yeah. I I did a full paint on those this week, uh, and then dipped them. Here's a bunch of old, old, old miniatures I had. Some of them which had really bad paint jobs, uh, just really basic. They were some of the first kind of miniatures that I painted, uh, and then I dipped them, and then they ended up looking halfway decent. Wolfgar and Regis on the left. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's actually the Dritz figure. Yeah. Oh yeah, you the one on the left. Yeah. Dual scimitars. Yeah. The, with the dual scimitars he just the figures are a little smaller back then uh let's see here's a here's my more time crew more time is a great minis game it's good stuff yeah this is a great man uh that's it oh here's my orcs i did paint these orcs uh he's so i got a whole blood bowl team at orcs with little black orcs and the other ones they turned out really pretty good i said they're a little little bit shiny i'm gonna probably take the shine off uh, the sh they look better in person than the camera. The camera reflects more of the light, which makes them look shinier than they are in person. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, we I we are full time gamers, orc, man. I can't yeah. believe the orc fluorescent green to like a perfect shade. You know, it was like wow. Yeah, well, see, I, I used to like I've I've painted a lot of figures and I've bought a lot and. And, uh, and ones that are like, you know, my generals and the individual uh, pieces, I actually, you know, do more effort on them and do highlighting and washes and shading and that kind of stuff. But those were seriously just slapped on paint uh, figures that I had laying around because I had so, I've got like hundreds and hundreds of orcs for an orc and goblin army. Yeah. And, uh, just the fact that you could dip them in there and they could turn out like that was pretty sweet. But, but yeah, Dave and Dave and I and everybody else on the team, we're, we're all game. We love all kind of gaming, so we're not just you know face ground. We're not even just RPGs. You know, we do we do all sorts of stuff. So yeah. it's fun. Yeah, I, I haven't. I started painting about a little over a month ago, and all I've done is terrain. So because I mean, I have you know four thousand minis already. I, I don't really need any minis. It's the terrain that I need. So. I bought a lot of those terrain packs by WizKids and the, the Mantrick yep. uh, Kickstarter boxes. So I have like 500 pieces of terrain. So I've just been learning how to paint the terrain. And it's been really fun. And every, every it seems like every time I paint, uh, I feel like I get a little bit better every time I paint. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Fancy Grounds College asked, have we ever purchased, turned into a virtual token for BTT use? Uh, I've actually did some camera stuff. If you throw um, like a kind of like a green screen, yeah, you can use the same technique that you use with a green, like Dave has with his green screen, which he's not actually using his chroma key for, but that's okay. But good um, idea though. You just throw throw a, a solid background that that's not matched in the same color as the mini. Take a good high quality quality photo. If you have a, uh, a tripod, it works even better. Mm -hmm. And I did a bunch of those with like the. Um, some of the pre-painted minis uh, for D and D, and those work great. Like especially if you do almost like a top-down or not. I would recommend not a hundred percent top-down. You don't want to be completely uh, perpendicular to them because you lose a little bit of quality. If you could just tilt it a tiny bit, like even just a five percent of an angle, you get a little bit more depth. Uh, and they make they make great figures. Actually, I think I have it on our Facebook page. Is, is some kind of proof of concepts. Um, we can't obviously distribute those. We were. Uh, I did reach out at one point to see if that's something that, like, hey, is that something we could just get a license to take your your figures and actually make digital versions of them? And uh, but that would work pretty well because there's a ton of miniatures out there, uh, awesome. yeah. and you could build them yourself, you know, from galleries and stuff like that, or from miniatures you have lying around. And the way that Devin Knight does his top down tokens, they're not directly down either. They're sort of like yep. what you mentioned. There's a there's at a, about a, a yeah slight angle. So yeah. 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 Let's so see you, if I can. You, what, what do you got going on with like games and stuff, Doug? You got any games you got going on or running, playing anything? I started like playing. I talked about it a little bit last week. I started playing Frostgrave, which is a miniatures game. So I've been kind of in a little bit of a miniatures kick uh, lately. Uh, I am interested Thanks, in Dave. Dragon Heist, though. Um, that looks kind of interesting. We we got we might need to look at getting a new game up and going here, Dave. Yeah, I hear. Been you. a while. It's been a little while. Yeah, it has. It's been well, probably over a year. Do you think that would be something that could be done once uh, Unity gets a little bit closer?
closer as well. Yeah, that's course. kind of what I was hoping a little bit because that that'll give us some cool options that we can do. Most definitely, I, I think it would be a good thing to do as well. Yep. 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 Yeah, I've, I'm got, trying to I've got two games I'm running. I've I've Wait. I've been playing D and D five E solid for you know Doug for since playtest for five years. So uh, we've actually kind of wrapped up my last one of Fandelver game about a month ago, and we we started playing. Uh, we, I've got Savage Worlds fifty fathoms going uh, every other Friday night, and then every other Saturday mm. I have uh, Starfinder. We're actually doing the the second AP against the Aeon Throne. And okay. it is, yeah, it's really good. It's uh, won't do any spoilers, but it, it's uh, it's a really good, really good adventure, and it's uh, starts out at level one, and um, I, I I like the way Starfinder uh, is. I just like the I like the mechanics. I, you know, I, I thought that when I first got into Starfinder last year around Gen Con, I was like, ah, is it going to be another identical version of Pathfinder? But no, it's mm-hmm. not. It's uh, got a lot of unique mechanics, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh, of Starfinder, and I actually like the the new uh, Pathfinder playtest too. It's really nice. It's uh, I I see them as a as a perfect balance or a perfect medium between a a rule light five e and a rule heavy three point five, and yeah. I I, th- I think it's just just a perfect amount of crunch before it becomes you know a little bit too rule heavy for me anyways but yeah 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 certainly certainly all right cool what about everybody in chat have we got any exciting anybody starting up a new camp <laughs> murder robo show yeah he, he's uh he's on the uh the wild eye podcast so hopefully we'll have them pretty soon on uh fantasy grounds fridays but he's he's also running a uh He's running Fifty Fathoms as well with his with his group. I actually took Fifty Fathoms, and I'm adding a lot of, I guess you could say, popular watery type of characters. Like I added Aquaman in, and I put uh, the, the Gilligan's the Gilligan's Island crew in there. They're like crew members of uh, <laughs> our party ship, and <laughs> it's so crazy. But yep, looks like some people are starting some water deep. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know a couple people that were really excited to, to get into Waterdeep. They they were looking forward to you know getting good maps of, of the actual city that they could use and stuff like that too. Yeah. yeah it looks like Knight is wanting to stick mainly to uh, Savage Worlds, uh, but then they released a product like Dragon Heist, and uh, he got sucked right back in. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, Murder Hobo, yeah. Fifty Fathoms is a great uh, is a great setting. It's uh, for new players. It's that's one of your nice. favorites, isn't it? Dave? Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite favorite settings of of any game for all time. Is is I just when I read it, I just fell in love. I'm like, man, this is this is awesome. And plus, you know, in the in the foreword, Shane also writes as well that. You know, he actually really enjoy. You know, he enjoys writing all of his stuff, obviously for you know Savage Worlds. But he said that this was probably. I think he quote. I I'm and I'm you know I'm paraphrasing this. I think he actually said that this is probably one of his his best plot point campaigns that he wrote. And uh, I totally agree. I mean, it, yeah. it is uh, not only is the the, the core storyline great, but with all of the Savage Worlds plot point pa- campaigns, not only with Fifty Fathoms, but all of the the great uh, campaigns that they had, the plot point campaigns for Deadlands, also. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just so much variety that you can do, and it and it does give you that sort of open world feeling. And you know, I know that there's yeah, not a if, lot of time. If you're not familiar with the plot point campaign, and you're used to, um, I guess, more what structured structured adventures. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit a little bit linear. different. It's you kind of have just a list of all these different things that are going on. And then as a DM, you can kind of move around. So, you know, you don't have to use hardly any of them. You know I mean? You could skip a bunch yeah. of them. You could say, oh, that looks really cool. You could uh, mix it into your campaign. It it really puts a lot of the control into the hands of the dungeon master to, or the game yeah. master to, to do what they want to do. And then they cross-reference them also into other areas of the book. So if you haven't done this here, this would probably be a good place to 
possibly start up this short little plot point adventure and you know it's just sort of like little kind of derails you from the main plot point but it's only a very temporary thing and you know plus you can you know learn a lot more lore about an area and you know so yeah Mm -hmm. i i I like the way that the plot point campaigns are are set up for and sort of it's almost sort of like a a choose your own adventure too because it'll say oh if you want to do this plot point adventure go to page so such and such yeah and then you and then it tells you to go back to well you need to go back now to so i like the way that the plot points are set up if i was to write an adventure i would i would do it in a in a plot point campaign style because that's just the way that I, I I like that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Night fifty one fifty said that uh, transitioning from like published kind of full adventures to the plot point was was a uh, an adjustment required an adjustment. But that you know he yeah. likes both styles. But yeah, it's I I appreciate both styles as well. And that's one of the things I like to do when you play a bunch of different game systems. Um, you know, you're you're just exposed to different ways of. Yeah. of gaming and DMing and playing and everything else too. So to me, that's what mm-hmm. I find to be enjoyable is that um, it's it's not a rigid, you'll always have to do, you know, A, B, C, and then that, you know, so some systems you can do that and other ones, you know, uh, are, are more flexible. So they're both yeah. fun. Yeah, and plus as a DM, you take all of the, the different, you know, types of play that you like and, you know, bits and chunks of games that you like and you we'll roll that into into one game and you know if you like something from D&D 5e you'll take that and if you like something from Savage Worlds you'll take that and, and add yeah. it in and just kind of you know give yourself your own hodgepodge of uh, house rules and doing things the way that you like to do them and that that's what I like to do as well I mean I don't, especially when I'm doing like linear adventures and modules I, I like to yeah. throw in stuff and you know I like to change things up so I uh, I saw a, a tweet from uh, Chris Perkins at Wizards of the Coast this week, actually, that um, I didn't see the full like conversation that left. All I saw was uh, his tweet response to somebody that was basically saying, I never run adventures as published. You know, he, he always just takes them and then just uses them as an outline and a yeah. source of content and then just just, you know, uses that and then runs his own campaign. Yep, that's that's pretty much what I like to do as well. And I can't tell you how many times that I've seen in stream. And in fact, it was when we were running our Storm King Sunder game too a couple of years back, well, a year and a half ago. A lot of people would say, "Oh, well, that's not the way that the story is," or what, "Where's this NPC?" Or uh, just because you know, I like to I like to change things up. And plus, you know, I don't like to do anything word for word. And plus, people love to follow yeah. along. So I like to I like to throw a stick into the spokes and make people go over the the handlebar and say, "Oh, it's it's not according to the book." Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I which I think if you're that. I mean if you're looking to run like adventure, they maybe want you to stick more closer to a certain style. But that's why I like to just I mean I would like to if I was going to use adventure league, I would use it as just ideas for a, for a game, you know, yeah. uh, because that that's just the way that I prefer to to run a game as well as to. Like I think in one of them you threw a, a black pudding in that dropped on my character's head and that was pretty fun and memorable, you know. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. And you <laughs> For also some of us. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was. Yeah, it took a while to get that, get that out of my character's hair, but that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I love to do stuff like that, you know. It's, especially, you know, the unexpected usually makes for the most memorable moments in games, and when you you know when you have your parties. You know, when you think they're going to do something and when they totally do something else. And because I, I like to prepare a little bit, but I don't prepare as much as I used to. Because yeah. the more that I prepared, the more that my par- my players didn't do what I would prepare for. So it was like I just started doing everything off of the cuff pretty much yep. for, for, for the most part. And, and, that, and that makes for a lot of the, the most memorable moments because – you know, DMGs, they don't they don't teach you that. You know, Dungeon Master's Guides, a lot of them don't. They'll mention something, but they don't go into detail on how to adjust for, on the fly. And it's all up to the DM. So, you know, yep. that's, that's when you just start thinking of other things that you've remembered before, like movies or reading books or, or TV shows or songs or whatever. And you just kind of incorporate everything on the fly. And I just, I just love doing that now because... 
you know, players will they'll do everything so radically different than what you're used to doing. You know, it's like uh, my Aeon Throne game. I mean, my, my players are doing things that I, I would have never expected a group to do, but, I mean, they're just so ingenious, and I'm not going to go into the spoilers and stuff, but... Yeah, but it involves like spaceships and uh, a small little village, and so you can just kind of put two and two together and figure out what's going on. So, but. yeah, certainly, cool. All right, well, I think our hour is actually flown by. So, um, wow, it is. So, yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys have a great, um, great weekend. Get some good gaming in. Yeah, thanks for joining us, and and don't forget next week, everybody, we've got. Keith Baker on next week. He's going to be talking about the new Eberron 5e stuff that just came out on the DMs Guild. So join us next week for that. It'll be uh, exciting to uh, to hear what Keith has to say about Eberron and and the future of Eberron as well. So yeah, and let us know what you think about the uh, the. If you end up getting Waterdeep Dragon Heist, let us know what you think, especially about uh, you know some of the maps and what Zaki uh, has provided. And, and post them up online for people to, to take a look at because that's something that's unique to Fantasy Grounds that uh, I think really, really helps kind of sell it. That, um, you know, Philip's done a fantastic job. So oh, absolutely. I'd like he, to get his work out there. He's a machine, man. He he takes care of all the 5e stuff, man. He, he is a machine, especially when you start poking a problem on times and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so how far along is this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I haven't seen that you submitted that yet. Is that <laughs> close to hitting that? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we'll see you guys next Friday uh, at noon Eastern Center Time. It's good to be back in the saddle again. Uh, good to be back, and uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, don't forget to take advantage of all of those sales uh, on the Fantasy Grounds website and on Steam. And also, uh, if you guys haven't uh, signed up for the Fantasy Grounds newsletter, please do that as well, and I'll put the, a link in there uh, just a second. Uh, so thank you guys again, Doug. Thanks again for hanging out, and uh, we will see you guys next week. So until next time, follow us on all the Twitter, uh, Twatter, Twatter, Facebook, <laughs> no, not Instagram. That That's probably a different oh, site. Is it? Uh, it, pro- I you know don't it, know. it probably is. So, anyways, guys, have a great weekend. Uh, get your gaming in, and uh, until next week, we will see you next time. And keep using Fantasy Grounds. Bye, everybody. <laughs>